have a Vincent Purvis with French national team player Pierre Corajo. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, good evening. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, man. We're just going to get right into the questions. First thing we're going to talk about is uh, you played last season with the Helsinki Roosters. What was that season like? Kind of take us through the ups and downs and winning two championships with that team last year. So, yeah, it was quite a long season. We have to, to get stay in shape. It's to stay uh, healthy all the season long. But the coaching staff, the physio and all the stuff make, makes us like great all the season long. The NFL start pretty early during the season, so it prepared us pretty well for the Maple League. We had like two games before the Maple League starts uh, against Uppsala, one one home game and one away games. Uh, that was pretty fine. We we could have like tested our, our offense, our defense, and to prepare the season well, as I said. Then we get into the to the Maple League straight by playing the rematch of the final from last year against the Crocodiles. It was quite nice. We we we, we had pretty nice uh, beginning of the season. We had the NEFL uh, during June or late May. Uh, it was quite kind of a peak because few games uh, in the in the legs already, and we had to play our top our top football at this time. Still in the beginning of the season with only few games, so we still had some stuff to fix. And right after that, we have a couple of games, still winning games, and we end up losing against Vasa Royals. I think it was a shock for us. So we took it as a positive step, knowing that we're not unbeatable. We just have to fix the mistakes we made during this game to get better. And that's what we did for the We We stay undefeated until the, the final game, and we won it. Yeah, y'all had it. I mean, it was pretty awesome season, even though – Y'all lost that game. I mean, I'm here in Finland. You were here in Finland. No one really thought y'all were going to lose that championship. And uh, what's it like playing for that organization? I mean, everybody knows that they what, you the Roosters won six championships in a row now. They're the team in Finland. You played for the Crocodiles the year before in Finland. So what was it like going from, like, the team that actually you lost to them the year before and now playing on that, like, the team in Finland? Like, what was the – what was the vibe with that organization? I think the the real difference between the Roosters and the other team in Finland is mostly that the Rooster is a real football program. They do have teams from under eleven up to the men's team and women's team who are performing in the best in the best level in the Maple League for both. And everybody around the team, like from the staff, the co- I mean the coaching staff, the players, the board, the volunteers, everybody working so well together. In the same like goal is to succeed uh, as a team and as an organization and as a program. Uh, I think many of the the youth team uh, play the final game or the championship game. I know that U19 won the won the title. The women's game, the women's team played the Maple League and the, the Maple Bowl, and the uh, men's team we 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 won the Maple Bowl also. So I think the main friend is all the team is organized. Uh, I know some teams struggled this year. Uh, the Crocodiles, the um, the, the Trump in, in Turku also, they end up like closing the team from Turku and uh, the Crocs like get re- uh, relegated to the second division. So the, the main difference is also the base of the Finnish player into the team. Big cities such as Helsinki allow the team to have more talented Finnish players you can find easily a job for school for anything, and we we all 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 the teams have at least uh, one one head coach, obviously one position coach also. So all the players will get into the program really young, really young. Get get into the men's team with like eight to seven years of really good football with well coach and all the stuff. So. I think this is the, the real difference between other teams in Finland and the Roosters. And I think only few teams in Europe have this, this kind of a program. I know the, the Vikings of Vienna have a youth football program who I can easily compare to the, to the Roosters. So the, the main success of the team is around the team. We, we had two physio, we had one, uh, one doctor all the season long. So the, those little details make the difference in the end. Well, that's great. Uh, that's definitely something that the Roosters have going that was really good this season. 
But let, let's talk about you with the uh, French national team. You guys won the world championships this season. I think it was the world championships. I'm not 100% sure. But tell me about it. Okay. It was war. It was the world games. My bad. The world games. There you go. So it's every four years. It's the same as the Olympic, but for the non-Olympic sports. So we have such sport as uh, water, like wakeboards, uh, some climbing stuff. We're going to the Olympics uh, for the next Olympics. American football as an invited sport. We had four teams. Uh, so we go straight into the semifinal game. French play against uh, Poland. And on the, other, on the other game, it was Germany versus uh, USA. So obviously, the USA is never bringing the best player they could. They don't bring any, any NFL or any pro players. It's mostly some uh, second division, third division college players who like get retired a few years ago. And for some reason, they, this year, they didn't have the best team they could have. They, they made a, a team from European play, American players who were already playing in Europe. And they, they end up losing USA, I mean, against Germany by one point, so 14 to 13. And uh, we played against Poland, who's, who's getting really better every year as, as a nation and, um, of American football. We won 28 to 2 against them. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't an easy game. We, we had to fix some details. That we struggled on offense. We had some little details to fix on, on defense also. But overall, it was a good game for us. We took a, a lot of confidence for the win. And we show up to the, to the gold medal game knowing that Germany has been the best team in Europe for the past like maybe 10 years. Uh, we, we obviously knew that it, it will have been the, the best game and the best team we could face. Uh, the, the, the rain was part of the game also, but I mean, for both teams, it's not an excuse anymore. Uh, we stopped them quite, quite often on defense and uh, our offense succeeded to score twice. They made, a, they made um, a big play would allow us to, to score six points. So at the end of the game, we won against them 14 to six. No, a close one, that's for sure. Uh, definitely surprising yeah. what happened with the United States. But the, the French national team, I mean, beating Germany, that's a big deal. I don't know if a lot of people understand this, but, I mean, they're supposed to be the echelon besides the United States of American football in Europe. So – Let's talk a little bit about your teammates on the uh, French national team. Like, what what made you guys such a good unit so far? Like, I know you don't get to practice all the time with the national team, but your roster is actually pretty good. Uh, throw out some names. Give some attaboys to some of your teammates out there who played well and definitely make you, your team as good as it is. I think this this team and the success we had uh... – both as a U19 team and as a men's team this summer because the U19 played the European Championship and they end up losing in final against uh, Austria after beating Germany in semi-final. So, and we won against uh, Germany in final, the World Games. I think the, 60, the success, it could be um, mostly part of the, what the Federation is putting into, into the sport and into how they, they want to develop the, the football in France. For many years, they always put not the money, but the best effort of the success of the men's team. And a few years ago, they, make a they made a turn into putting more uh, effort and money onto, into the formation of coaching, into the formation of, co of coaches, into how they want to succeed and uh, to make the success and develop the U19, U17 team. And we, we, they also made like an agreement with some team and schools in Canada. So we could put some play, bring some players over there, and once they, they reach their potential and they end up playing over there, they come back to France with obviously a better level. So that's awesome. I think this is one of the aspects. The other one is after the European Championship in 2014, we, we won the, the bronze medal after losing against uh, Austria. The coaching staff changed. So we now have uh, um, Patrick Azume as a head coach. Robert Valesente um, as a defensive coordinator, and Robert Valesente won a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. I think it's, it's the best coach who probably ever coach in Europe. Like talking about football wise, he knows everything. He's really a master of, of talking about football and how to coach a defense. So it started all in 2015 when they started having a few camps a year. 
we we had the the world the world championship uh, in uh, in Captain Ohio. We ended up like getting torn by the USA eighty something to zero, and we had like a herd breaking lose against Mexico. So instead of being third, we end up uh, being fourth. It was kind of a shock for everybody because we knew that at this time we could be we will compete against every team in the world. I mean, USA is something a bit different, so I will take it apart. But Mexico, all the European team, Australia, and all the team like this, we could easily compete and beat them. So after that, we keep working that way onto getting better. We had a, a friendly game last season against Italy. It was quite of a close game. We made a huge mistake, but it allowed us to, to fix also the details and to get back better with at least three camps a year. And right before the World Game this summer, we had a one-week camp uh, in France before flying to Poland. We, we had more than 60-something players, so we, had, we put a competition on, on every snap, every play, even in individuals. We wanted to really get better every single snap. We work a lot, uh, like outside of football. I mean, outside of the field, like uh, walking on videos and all the stuff. And one of the big aspects is how we can compete physically. We all became athletes because a few years ago, I think it wasn't a thing to work out beside football for many players. Like competing on the field and being good on the field, just as a player, was enough for them. But as I said, Azume, coaching uh, coach Azume. Bring, bring us this this like culture of training and working out outside of the football field. So he he started like a club 500, who like awarding the best athletes of the team, who succeeded on the combined test, or like the regular combined uh, NFL combined test. And everybody took like, okay, I'm, I'm at this level. I need to get better. I need to be club 500. Everybody needs to be there. So I need to start working out this playing. I need to uh, I need to go to the to the track and field to become a good athlete. And as soon as I'm a good athlete, I will go to the French national team camp, and I will start getting a better a better football player. So I think that was the big and the the big change and a big difference between the new coaching staff and the past coaching staff. Huh, that's awesome, man! It looks like y'all are definitely doing great things, and and you yourself, Pierre. I mean, you have a knack for playing on good football teams with great coaching staffs, great organizations. Let's talk a, a little bit about you and your background. I mean, how did you start playing American football and what got you into playing internationally? I mean, you've definitely been in Finland the last two years for sure, but what's your, your journey, man? Tell us about it a little bit. So it, it started when I was 15 years old. I think for many of, of my friends who started football at the same time as we all grew up with the American TV, uh, TV series, American movies, like broadcasting uh, football, football and baseball and all the American sports. So it's something I really wanted to try. Uh, I did it in 2015 in my, in my hometown with a, a small local town. I get really welcome well with the, with the coaching staff and the players at this time. I had the opportunity to play and to join a sports school in France because for many teams in Europe, we only have only two, maybe three practice a week for all, the, all levels. And I had the opportunity to play uh, for a sports school where I was like practicing every single day of the week and we had game on the weekend. So for a world year, it makes a huge difference. I was practicing twice more than any other players in, a, in, in, in my home team. Uh, after that, um, I joined a CEGEP in Canada. It's a kind of a prep school uh, it was in 2013. Um, it's it's something different in Quebec, in Canada. They do they do re, uh, graduate from high school, but before going to the college or university, they do have to have either two or three years of prep school before going to college. It's it's mandatory for everybody. And over there, they do play football and uh, any other sport. So I did this for one year, and the next season, I, I joined the Magill Renman at the off season, a college team. Uh, I was really, I was really proud of it. Uh, I learned a lot from it because it's the same with just more, like, more possibility and more tools to learn and to and to get better. 
after that, I came back to France. And at this time, the Tonon Black Panthers had Larry Lego as a head coach, who also was the head coach of the French national team. So I had a few talks with him and the coaching staff, and they proposed me to play there, to have a job in Tonon, who was like really, really near to Switzerland, far away from my home. It was, it was a really good decision for me for them because we won the, the French national championship. We ended up losing in the, in the semi-final of the Champions League, but I learned a lot uh, with Larry, Larry Lego and all the Tonon Black Panthers coaching staff. And at this time, uh, I joined the national team uh, under, under Larry Lego. So I was part of the 2014 uh, European Championship with the national team. I was I was kind of a rookie over there, so I only have snaps on special team. Maybe all the all the special team. So it was was already a, a good point for me. I had few snaps on defense, but it was mostly a learning year for me. Uh, I was really blessed of it. I was really proud of it. Uh, obviously, it wasn't as that good as as, as we expected because we play, uh, we played a brown medal game. We won against Finland, and from that season, I had a few talk with um, coach uh, from. Uh, the crocodiles in 2014. I was kind of afraid to make the steps and to go play outside of France. So uh, I stay uh, I stay in France for two, for one more season, uh, playing and coaching for a small small town. They have a good sports project. I was head coach of the of the U19 U17 women's team, and I was also coaching the men's and playing with them. It was it helped me a lot to understand the game more and to open my mind about coaching players and and like sharing what I learned in Canada and in other in other countries with other coach uh, after one season with them um, I was still in touch with the crocodiles so I decided to to make this big step and to join them uh, last season in 2016 uh, I was really happy crocodiles was was such a great experience it's I don't regret anything it was a, a really good time over there uh, we had a great season. I learned a lot uh, from players, uh, from coaches, and, and also from Finland. Finland is a country I really love. And after that, uh, I joined the Roosters. I mean, if you can beat them, join them, is the, is the saying. So uh, I ended up this year, this season, playing with the Helsinki Roosters after I helped uh, a team I played in before uh, for the beginning of the season, from December to, to March. Okay, so okay, so I just want to talk a little bit. I just bit. want to talk a little bit. Um, so you played for the Crocodiles, then you came to the Roosters, and I know you personally, so I'm gonna just put this out there. I follow you on Facebook, man. You have like a thousand events in Helsinki that you're going to like <laughs> all the time. Like you love it in Finland, right? I love this country so much. It's it's amazing. Outside football, because football is only a few hours a, a day, a few hours a week also. So I had to find something else to do. And I was so blessed to meet some great coaches and players who invite me to the house, spend a lot of time with me and with all the imports all summer long. Uh, I met some great people also outside football. And it's such a great city as Helsinki. I have always something to do. Like you have some museum stuff artistic stuff, uh, also music concert, all summer long. The summer in Helsinki is usually sweet. Well, I mean, this summer was quite rainy and not the best uh, uh, as ever, from what I heard, but uh, it was a tremendous year and tremendous summer. We we were like well located with the import play in the apartment from in a part of the Helsinki. Uh, the transportation in Helsinki are amazing. You can go from point A to point B quite easily and quite fast. There is nothing broke any time. I, I had a bike also this summer, so I spent a lot of time biking and, and going around the city. Um, Helsinki is on the arbor uh, and on the coast of Finland, so it's only a few hours, I think two hours away from Tallinn, Estonia. Mm -hmm. I've been there a few times. It's quite a small town, but it's always, always sweet and always lovely to go there. Um, I spent some trip also to, I made some trip also to Sweden. Just have to take a boat, like on the on the late afternoon, and the the next day in the morning you just uh, arrived in in Stockholm. Uh, Russia is quite at the corner, also just a few hours of car or train, and you you just jump and send me to another country, another culture. 
Uh, that's what I love to do besides football, is to learn and to experience stuff who are going to make me better as a man and make me grow as a person also. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, you're one of the few people who actually, a Euro European who comes to another European country and just enjoys it and loves it so much there. Um, talking back again to, let's get back into France, where you're from. Um You've been playing, you said, since you were 15. So you've been able to see the growth of the sport in France. What is it like out there? Like, how do you see the growth from the time you first started to what it is now? And what do you see as the future for American football in France? I think it, it's moving forward. As I say, we made some, some changes uh, for the Federation. It's moving slowly but surely. <laughs> um, the huge step and the huge turn we made putting more effort and money into coaching uh, and to coaching the coach because it's, it's a huge part. I think the lack, we had some great players all around Europe and especially in France because we have such a culture of sport in France for any sports. But the lack of great coaches and the coaches who knows a lot about football is a thing. So the Federation uh, put like some football certificate and football degree you have to follow if you want to coach a team. And that's something really interesting because players are going to get coached well, going to perform well after in the field, and they're just going to make the whole federation better. Uh, I think the other stuff is how the team, the teams around France needs to be structured. Uh, as I say, um, the Roosters are really successful because of the program and all the – organization is managed and structured. We, we need to have team who can, who can uh, be sure they will have the money and the finance, uh, the finance to, to perform and to play all over the season. If they do have to take a bus to another town, some team just forfeit a few weeks before the season. It happens, and that's, that's not normal. I think that's, this is not how we should represent football in France because we're still a small sport and if we want to grow and if we want to get recognized by the authority and by the, the public who are coming to watch their ga our game, we need to fix those details. Uh, I think in five or ten years, um, I will imagine the, the, the football this way. I want to every team more than 300,000 people or citizens or inhabitants I think they need and they do have the tools to perform and to be in the first division, the top league of France. I think it should, it not should be mandatory, but this is how it should be. Because when, once you have 300,000 like inhabitants in your city, you can obviously find players who want to play football. And yeah. if, you, if you're well organized, if you, well, if you have great coaches, that will keep, they will keep the players and you will perform over the year. Uh, asking for pro team or semi-pro, semi-pro teams across France is maybe a bit complicated. Just market markets better the sport, uh, mediatize the sport better, and organize the teams better. I mean, you cannot have the team to be all the same, but you have to make them follow a certain rules about how you manage a team and how they should be. Because we, we receive a lot of money from the, from the state in France. So many of the team just take, take this for granted that they don't look forward or outside of it to bring like a private funds into the team who make, could make a huge difference. I think this is a step we need to take. And a great, a great example of it in Finland is how the team, how the football is broadcast on TV. It's maybe a paid TV uh, on the internet or, or some uh, like random, random uh, channel, but uh, I've had a talk with the president of the Finnish Federation and he explained us and he showed us how broadcasting the, the games on TV made, us, made the sport way better because you brought many, many more players to the team who just discovered there is American football in Finland. So they decided to join a team, and that make a huge pick on the um, on the numbers of players of every team. Mm -hmm. That also bring funds to the team, to the league, and overall it developed the sport. I think it's a it's a mandatory step 
look, if you want to make the, the football something really, uh, just making a football a thing in France. This is the step we need to take forward and to put the games on TV and structure the team and the coaches better. That's all. Well, it's 2017, so live streaming isn't that complicated of a thing. And then it could lead to television time in certain countries. So definitely something that Finland, I mean, France could work on. But uh, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, Pierre, but I do want to get one last thing out of off my chest. Um, you haven't signed for a team for 2018 yet. Let's, let's do a little uh, – What is so good about Pierre, the defensive back? I want you to spend the next couple of minutes kind of telling us what kind of player you are and what you bring to a team when you do play for that organization. Um, I will obviously bring my passion for the sport. Uh, I've been playing quite long, but quite not long at the same time. It's been, it's been 12 years I'm playing, so it, it could be a lot for, for some players, but It's only, it's only two years outside of, of France. So I still want to work on that way and to play outside of, uh, of France. And I can bring my passion, my hard work, my dedication to the team. I think it's mandatory. If you, want to, if you love this sport, if you want to perform on the field, you have to be passionate of it. So uh, I, will, I will be a hard worker. I'm also a hard worker. Uh, I learned that if you want to succeed in the team, you have to embrace the – The, the kind of the team first it's obviously a thing that I'm 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 always doing because the success you have on the field depending on on your teammates also we also we all have to trust each other and to play for each other so uh, I'm doing a lot of work outside of the field into the gym the track and field I spend a lot of time watching games and watching films on the, on, on computer and on pedal especially Uh, I think that's made a huge difference knowing what the other team is going to play and what the other team is going to do that just make you play easier on the field. So I'm a, as a player, I'm a, I'm a ball hawk. Uh, I'm not a hard eater. It's something that, I mean, it's, it's not a, a inside every player. I will do safe tackle open field all the time. I do miss like rarely tackles. I go, I go hustle downfield quite, quite fast and quite hard also. Uh, I had this year the, the record of the interception of the league, and overall the defense we had recorded like 23. Uh, so I will, I will fit in, in many, many organizations, and I will make a huge difference on, on every team I will play in. I like to add to what you said, Pierre, because I watched you personally this season, and like you said, you're definitely a ball hawk. It's kind of crazy to see you go from the Senioki team where you were effective as well, but putting you on the Roosters this year and even on the French national team, you can definitely see that you've grown as a player and you always give credit to your coaches because you're constantly learning. I can definitely see the development and anyone who wants to have you on their team next year will be lucky to have you, man. Thanks for that. So we appreciate Pierre Corregos. Ah, I might have said it wrong. Yeah, right. almost. <laughs> I'm trying to get his name right, guys. But we we appreciate you talking to us today on Podium Live, Pierre. Have a great day, man. Thanks a lot for having me. Bye for everybody.